Hello and welcome to our Cabin Boy Nets Bullcast, coming to you deep from the Canadian forest. This is Christopher. And this is the other guy. Jamie. We finally taught a workshop in our workshop to a group called Trax. And what was special in your dye pots? Well, you'll have to stick around and see. You also got mail and I got a beautiful pillow. There's a book that also goes along with the pillow and we're gonna be talking about Wensleydale Sheep and we're getting ready for the Twist Festival. I can't wait. It's coming up in just a few days. So st sit back, grab your favorite drink and we'll tell you our story. And welcome and thank you everyone for tuning in. Where am I looking? <laughs> this is a new camera. Is it the red light or do I look here? Okay. Where's you look camera? well, Where's we can see the little, in the little frame you look fabulous. So but I did notice that you changed your wardrobe. <laughs> I had a last minute wardrobe change because I was wearing a plaid shirt and I didn't want to clash with this plaid because he he's he's you know the rustic dude and I'm just me. That's why I wear this. You're just you. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I want to say welcome once again. We're so excited for this episode, and we're so happy to see you once again back with us. Before we get going, so what are you drinking today? Well, you know what? This is the earliest I think we've ever done an episode. Yes. Only because, you know, it's Monday morning. I'm having my morning tea. Oh, excellent. And I'm just drinking beautiful sterling water. Crystal clear it is, right? Crystal from the, clear. Fresh from the well. Yep. <laughs> who go, who I removed I removed the chunks. Yeah, it's fine. Who's the one who's gotta go get that bucket and haul it up the well and just Liza, there's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. Yeah. And we have our flowers. What so are they? We have flocks. What are, they? What what are, are they? those flowers? Then their then their flowers are flocks. Oh, for flocks' sakes. I, <laughs> oh, please. How can I oh, say that? God. <laughs> yeah. That that goes under the category of dad jokes. Oh god. And these. Do you remember what these are? Flowers, yellow, <laughs> pretty, like you. Oh, please. Pretty's not a word that's described me. No, <laughs> handsome and rugged. I'm the pretty one. Let's get it straight. Oh, hey, Butch not Queen. straight. Sorry. Oh, let's, why do we? <laughs> anyway. Can we get on with the show? Yes. Okay, did we say what the yellow one was? No. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. It's a yellow flower. It was flower. a spring, wasn't it? A, it's a spring from over there. No, what was it called? You said it was a forest something. Yeah. A forest. Oh, you're going to have to look uh, it up. Yeah, I know. You said it was a forest daisy. I, oh, yeah. yes, it was. It's, it's called, no. <laughs> oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. It's a florist daisy. That's not what you said originally, because well, we said, oh, wow. How because I didn't have my glasses on. on, and on about it. Oh, my gosh. Because I went on and on about, oh, how appropriate, because we live in the forest. It's a forest daisy. Yes. I'm going with that. It's a forest daisy, not a florist daisy. So what there we, are no florists around here. What have we been up to? You I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You tell me. I, because, I just, because my activity had a great impact on you. So that was... I, was I know what I've been up to. I was studying for an exam, and so I spent the last month studying for the exam, so that put all the pressure on you to get ready for twist. That's right, because in his real world, um, he had to write an exam. <laughs> the and real life. In our La La Land, I'm just washing wool, hauling wool, getting prepping wool. Oh, and, but wool, you're getting water as well. Wool. Getting buckets of water from the well. Oh gosh, and the water from the well that it uses up to just wash all that wool. Yeah. So doing a lot of prep because we need product and new beautiful colorways for twists. So and filling orders. Twist. And filling orders as well. Filling orders in between. Yeah, so the reason I bring it up is because I found it fascinating. Fascinating. That the way to study, because I haven't, the last time I wrote an exam was probably eight years ago, maybe. And oh my goodness. Eight years, oh my goodness. three months, Did two hurt? days. Did it hurt? <laughs> no, but I just found it interesting because it was a textbook and you had to obviously read it and study it but it's trying to figure out the best way to study for, for this given the limited amount of time I had 
when I say a month, it was only like a couple of hours. Yeah, because, because you know, I work full time, and then we. When you used to study with your quill pen and no computers, you know, it's <laughs> different now online. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, sure. <laughs> But I, so I, here's what you I read did. a book and everything. I thought, so I, what I had, it's very difficult to study with this one because he always has a million different ideas that he likes to articulate. I like to chat. <laughs> I like a little top list. So I hid in the, in the work shed for a while and studied there. You did. You loved it. Cause oh my gosh, it was fantastic. That's one thing about this. We love this beautiful cabin. But even here, you could see how dark it is behind us. There are one, two, three, four windows right here, but you never know it. It's just the wood at the darkness. So the, your, the workshop is all windows and there's sunshine and uh, it's nice and cool in there and you absolutely yeah. loved it in there. Yeah, and the key was just the quiet. You were gonna <laughs> sleep? Quiet, except for the birds, the birds. Yeah, I was gonna sleep. You were gonna sleep great. in there. And it was just, it was so relaxing and it was great. I had was able to focus and it was it was wonderful. So that's what I was up to. What was I doing while you were in the work shed? Oh, I was doing probably- Talking to the birds. Talk, talking to the birds and the deer. The usual, the usual. Oh. I talked to the animals, they talked back. Well, it works because the, Mother deer and the fawn yes. have been walking by the front window every day. It's too bad you didn't get a video. Couldn't. I, know. I mean, They're it just beautiful. happens. You're in the middle yeah. of doing work. So laptop in front of the window and they just boop, right across the front yeah. lawn. I didn't see them. And then off they went down the stairs and out the driveway, but I didn't see them. But I did see the other one, which we'll show you perhaps. Yeah. The other ones, they, they found a new place to sleep right in, right in the drive area because there's these low bushes and they like to curl up. It's been so sweltering hot. They curl up underneath the bush right there and I walked right up to it within less than 10 feet and it, it doesn't even move it did stand up and it just looked at me and I'm thinking hey how you doing there yeah here and um, they're not afraid because I I have a way with you have a way with nature with nature sure yes, yes. and then he wandered off and I followed him it's, it's kind of neat excellent neat okay so while we're on the topic of workshops let's talk about our workshop that we had in the workshop was it in the workshop that yes you went? The first group we had was tracks and tracks. Track stands for, for Trent, Trent Aboriginal Cultural Knowledge and Science. There you go. There you go. You and, got it right. And it's so a my daughter works for, and they're affiliated with Trent University, obviously, because it's the first two letters. And your daughter. My daughter. daughter. My daughter, daughter. Yeah, she was the one who she studied there. She studied at Trent, yes. And she also works for Tracks. And so they came on a bus to the workshop. They were fantastic. They were amazing. I could not have asked for a better class. They were fantastic. I was more amazed when it sort of slipped his mind. He said, oh, by the way, that whole group of 16, 17, <laughs> you know, youth are, are coming in three days. Oh, it was Sunday. And they're like, well, they're going to be here on like Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> it was Thursday. Like, oh, and then at first we were talked about having, there was going to be maybe a lunch served. And I thought... Okay, I got to prepare lunch, <laughs> get something in order. Anyway, it was surprise, surprise. Very, like surprise. you know, last minute to now. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, that group's coming for the workshop. I like workshop? yeah, but you made cake. You made workshop. cake. I did. It so, was really good. So they did have a lunch provided, and then I I made a um, what did I make? I made oh, it was delicious. What did I make? Well, gluten free chocolate. Oh, the gluten free, which I I made was before. Amazing. Yeah, that chocolate banana bread. I've done it. I've did, did it in that fireplace behind us. You done did you done good. And then what was the other thing I made for the it was for the first time I made it. You made a lemon Oh yes. It was amazing. Lemon was blueberry a, cake. Oh yeah. my gosh, it was delicious. It was so good. But the yeah. chocolate was the more popular end. Oh I like the lemon. And it then, was it was great. I loved it. It was great. And I had um oh I think what was it? The count at last count. I at last count. Is that the name of the book? Yes. You've already jumped you jumped over <laughs> at last count. At my last count I I'll just call five, you Claire from now on. I had five pieces of cake. Oh, jeez. But they're just Yeah, little. okay, please. They're five pieces of cake before you the serve to everybody day. else. No, I had two. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that at all. Had, don't believe them. They had two pieces. So here's one of my observations. <laughs> so when we walk over from the cabin to the workshop, it's maybe 100 feet. It's 120 feet because we had to wait the line for the water to get there. Yeah. So this is us going over. We're like this and... We and everyone's going. Shooing, shooing the oh, the deer, deer flies fly are season. horrible the last this year. two weeks and the mosquitoes are horrible. The humidity and the heat, the deer flies have been crazy. So. And there's, we have to wear a hat because there are usually about five or six of them buzzing around your head. Or so ten. okay, so here's my observation. What do you observe? <laughs> when we we were working in the workshop with the tracks group, and then they would come out and they would just chat outside of the workshop. Not one of them went like this. 
Oh, that's they, interesting. They were sitting there having a conversation, and I was look. I was in shock. And was, You're right. And they, no one ever did this and shooed the flies away or the you think the deer flies. Used to it by now. And and so I just like, how pathetic are the two of us? Because oh, it's boy. constantly swatting. And I was saying that they, them coming up the drive up the steps there. You know, and, and you know us flailing. They were just like, "Hey," because they probably thought we were saying, "Hi, <laughs> hi." Welcome. Well, and then, and then Matt, one of the guys, went and walked in deep into the bush, and then two girls went and, and walked in as well. And I just, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, it's, it's what is wrong with the two of us? We have to, we have to toughen up. No, and they, and they, and you know, on their on their breaks, they're having we made some iced tea as well. Yes, and um, with all that. When well you say we, to, you were well, the one who made the iced tea. I had to hold that water up, put the bucket, and fill the yeah. teapots. Come on, last. Um, and so, um, no, they were just standing around out there with having, having their tea, having their cake when I bought the cake. Yeah. Um, and they didn't have a problem, but, you know, they're used to nature. <laughs> Tougher than the two of us, for sure. Mm. But it was great. It was so fantastic. It was lovely. I, I learned a lot from them, and hopefully I shared some knowledge with, well, with the group as well. You know, it's there is a shared enthusiasm because um, they were so excited when the colors came out, especially, you know, the we indigo. We did indigo, indigo and indigo. marigold. Yes. And so... And mixed know, them as well. Exactly. And so the, the expression, the excitement when they saw the color change from green to blue to then combining the colors in there. So, and that's like, you know, the sometimes when you, you know, uh, do a new colorway and it comes out an incredible, vibrant color and you're very excited, which, you know, you think you, we've seen it all, but then we see the excitement of these, uh, this younger new group doing what we do and they loved it and had a great time and smiles and giggles and you were a great, what? a great well, instructor as well. Oh, thank you. I was behind the scenes. <laughs> well, why don't we show everyone? Yeah. A, a we glimpse into footage. what it was. So I know that you got mail. We'll talk about that first. And I then got a special delivery in person. But let's talk about the mail you got. Well, you didn't tell me that. What special delivery? The pillow. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> anyway, okay. Yes. Well, let's let's That's talk about this first. Yes. So. Okay. So I I decided to go on TikTok a, few, a little while ago. TikTok. Yeah, and I actually, do I don't do the TikTok. Okay, that is not true because you were the inspiration for going on TikTok. Was I? Yeah, well, not you actually. It was Iona, Iona trailer when she was mm. here visiting. Oh, she. Oh, that. I put her on TikTok. She's nice. And 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 I started putting some more things on TikTok. So okay. Um, and on TikTok, someone reached out and said that they had some wool for me. Okay. So and they just maybe <laughs> out of the blue, they just said, "I got something for you." Yes. Yeah, it was wow. really nice. It well, was that super is nice. special. Yeah, and it's from Johnny Cavanaugh in uh, Edenderry, um, County of Kildare. Kildare, where's that? Pure Irish alpaca fiber. Where's County of Kildare? Knit as double knit, hand wash. This is f- from the farm where I worked. Wow. Yep. That's pretty special. So it's Ireland. Yep. And taking care of alpacas. So these are Irish alpacas. So he's actually worked. Yep. And this is beautiful. Absolutely probably beautiful. Really helped him produce, well, obviously helped him produce in this very yarn right here. Right. Yeah. That's, that's gorgeous. A, uh, I love that. That's a ton of yarn too. That it's is a lot so of yarn. So super nice. Um, and make something nice with it. So I will definitely make something. Irish alpaca. Do they have different accents? <laughs> So that's, I'm not going to tell you what. <laughs> so I do have an idea when I open this up. Actually, it was a combination of reading our exchanges back and forth on TikTok oh. and, and this. So well, that's um, a coincidence. He probably thought, like you said, oh, oh, I've got, oh, I got something I could send you. So I'm going to, yeah, I have an idea of what I'm going to do with this. So I'm really excited. That's really special. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. It's it's beautiful, and I'm, I'll share it with the group too. And, and as the work progresses, so this could be technically a whip. Because in my mind, I've already oh. figured out what it is that I want to do with it. We haven't even mentioned lips. Or, no. Or thoughts. Okay, so it's up to you now. 
what are we talking about now? Well, he said you got a special oh, delivery. I had a very special, we had a very special guest come by. Yes. Two very special Two people. special guests, yes. Very special people. We consider friends because we've been in touch with them often on, um, especially Kirk. So Kirk and Claire. Well, and we had, we actually interviewed Kirk. So, and you were there, but let's start with this. And okay, but are you going to tell about this story from the beginning? Well, before I present what my surprise was, <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, so what, where do we start? We went to the book. Uh, there was a book launch. Okay, we went to a book launch. Kirk Dunn, we've interviewed in the past. Yes, and his wife is a very Claire is a very successful writer. Yes, and for TV shows such as. Little Mosque on the Prairie and Degrassi, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. She's a very established writer. And they they wrote plays together? Yes, they have. Because Kirk Dunn, remember, he is an incredible knitter and and well he's an know, actor it's, as well. It's, yeah. And an actor. Yeah. And he's he's the one who's done those incredible um, stained stained glass windows, nine foot tall, three of them that took him fifteen years. Intricate, very intricate work the, the, it's, there's something more than just knitting yeah the technical term is stitch knitting incredible like stitch I mean, stained glass one stitch yeah. at a time yeah it's incredible so okay so yes. this leads to so this leads her to book. Your, her book because you saw an advertisement that they would be doing a book signing in an Amherst Island Amherst Island and their connection he loves to use Topsy Farm yarns and we have a, a great connection relationship with the Topsy Farm folk. We we interviewed them, we've been to the farm, you've done workshops, it's over there on the island. And so he grew it's up one on the of, island. And he grew up on the island. So Kirk Dunn did. So on Amherst Island. So it was all connected. I thought, I'm so going to that book launch. But I didn't let them know that we were going and he didn't know. I was just decided we're gonna go. So she was launching her new book and doing the book launch in a church on Amherst Island. And we showed up. We showed up with our knitting and mm -hmm. it was packed the church was was full it was really nice we sat at the back and they were raffling off a pillow as a door prize a door now prize. the pillow connection is there's a very rare bird and we don't have the name of it henslow yes and so a very rare bird and it, it's it, it plays a role, you know. You know how a, a book will have sort of a link. So there's many links because of their um, his connection to, and growing up and having lived in Amherst Island and some of the characters. And you know that's all she called it. Uh, it's autobiographical fiction, a new term she had discovered. Because of course, you write a book. There's going to be some of your life experiences in there. So the bird is is one of the threads in the book. It's and, a Henslow Sparrow. Yes, and um, do you know why they picked that bird? Well, she said something about. Um, it's it's a sign of hope and yeah. it's a yes and um, it's also rare it's very rare so when yeah. you spot it it's very special and it brings you hope and I'm so all of impressed this, that you all remember of this, that all, the whole piece of it all of this was very inspirational and I thought to myself there was a connection because um, I'm not gonna get into deep details but it's very connected to my mother my mother's past um, it's a hope and, and survival exactly and it reminded um, it, it, it brought me thoughts of my mom and it has a connection with the bird, and that goes back from a couple of other incidences that involve a bird. Yeah. Um, and that's my connection to my mom. So when I saw the pillow and the, the uh, hope and survival, and my mom being the, a very tough survivalist uh, mother, um, when I saw the pillow, I thought, that's my pillow. I just felt like a connection that is my pillow. Can I say and something just before you go on? When we got out of the car and parked the car, I had this feeling of, we're going to win the pillow. Because I knew that we were drawing the pillow, and I thought, but and then I said, when when I gave a talk at the University of Toronto to the Toronto Knitters Guild, Kirk Dunn was sitting in the audience, and he won my door prize. And so then I thought, so then I was overthinking this. And I thought, well, okay, well, what are the odds? What are the odds that, that he won the, this door right. prize? And, and this is a few years ago. This not like going to happen. Three, four years ago. So yeah, you know. The, the fact that that thought crossed your mind was like, as if like we're at his event now and I'm going to win the pillow. So we got these little ticket numbers and um, then Claire stopped the show and she was talking about her book and she said, before we do the door prize, she wanted to invite him up to talk about his, his design work on the pillow because it's very intricate. And this is the pillow. I'll bring it up as we're talking to it. Talking to it. I'm talking to the pillow. <laughs> so here is it's the pillow and there is the bird. 
And so maybe you could explain it. Well, I would never believe it. Well, once you look close closely at it, you can see that it was knitting. But it looked like a tapestry to me, and it was, it's, I, I was, it's, it's just incredible. And and what's incredible about it is he uses a worsted weight and a fingering weight, and he blends the colors together to, um, to bring out more color and more texture. And, and this, it's absolutely gorgeous. He does have also now that you asked me to talk about it, um, he put the, he put the pattern on Ravelry, and I'll put a link to it. Um, and so I bought it because I, I, I'm fascinated. I th this is really, really amazing. Yes. And then yeah. he studied. He went to study with someone very well known. in Calf Facet. Right. Yeah. And this is how he learned this technique yeah. of blending colors. Yeah. And he describes it and explains it like the Impressionists, which I didn't know this, but if you know the you know Impressionist painters, yeah. um, how they, if they didn't have the exact color, of course you mix paints to have the color, but he said with the pointillism that they would do somewhat, which is very similar to what he does, is you know you'll put a blue a blue dot next to a yellow dot, and the illusion creates the green. They're not actually blended together to make color. It's just visually you're going to see the blending of the colors visually, but if upon closer inspection you could see the blue, the di very distinct blue yellow that yeah. make it look like yeah. green. They're not actually blended. So he takes that technique with every stitch to create color over color and. As an illusion, you see a blend of colors, and it's so realistic. So yeah, it's incredible. It's amazing. So, so I'll hold this, and you can talk about the story. Okay, so, so we're, at the, we're at the so, drawing So he now. explained all this. That's right. So Claire invites him. He explains the technique and how much work is involved in this pillow, and I was very excited. And I, I was just sort of thinking about my mom, and starts reading the number, and I'm like, one, two, three. This isn't quite the number. Four, five. I'm like, no. Seriously, this no way. Five, six, seven, eight. I was in shock. I was like, come on, because I thought, no. I was so in shock, I didn't even move. I just sat there. You just sat there. <laughs> Did that just really yeah, happen? I had to look at your. Out of all of the people there, and there were a lot of people because that church was full. Yeah. A small church, but full. So I don't know how many people. 60, 70. A lot of people. 50, I don't know. Um, and I was in shock that. Are you seriously telling me that because of I was thinking of my mom and the bird and I finally stood up and walked to the front <laughs> and the woman who was running the show from the women's auxiliary. That's another story. That's a story for another day. <laughs> the pillow, the pillow was the second to our prize. The book was the first prize, which was great, but we went there to purchase the book. But so we purchased two and we got the book and I didn't get the pillow. Everybody in the I room, didn't. everyone in the room, including Kirk and Claire, were in shock that you didn't get the pillow because everything Great. led up to Kirk was up there talking about the pillow, and then we did the draw, and the, and, and the door prize was and the, the pillow. Door was the pillow, <laughs> and then she said, "You don't get the pillow." <laughs> well, she didn't quite say that. She says well, she was, was holding this book. It was not says, as nice as that. <laughs> she says, "This is." I did laugh. I was just a stud. I was like, and the, it was almost like the whole audience was like, audience, you know, all the it, the guests were. It's kind of like, <gasps> yeah. Oh. And then there was a the silence. I was like, oh, <laughs> thank you. And I walked away, and I was like, what is going on? I thought you, you thought it was a joke. I like thought was... this is not for real. But Jamie, how did you end up with this pillow? Yes. How did you end up with the pillow, Jamie? Well, you could tell the story. No, I'm not telling the story. It's your story okay. to tell. So, okay, this has gone on. Kirk, they were going to do another book signing in another local area yeah. nearby, and they were passing through. They said, oh, we're going to stop by to say hello. We'd love to see the cabin and stop by and say hello. And we thought, that's wonderful. Absolutely. If you've got time, come on by. Come on by for a, a little snack and a, a visit and a drink, uh, coffee, what have you. And they popped by. And then he said, oh, by the way, I have something for Christopher. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was great. So he hands me a bag, and it was full of pits from avocados and the skins from avocados. I was like, what a great gift. I was, I was so excited. It was so yes. thoughtful. And because I was really, really I, was, I was 
over the moon. I was yeah, so excited. Because he knows he died with avocado and he yes. has a connection with someone who who gives him avocado and all of that to die with. And he thought he'd bring that over. And yeah, that was he, super nice. And then he pulled out a big bag and he goes, oh, I have something for you. And he pulls out this shopping bag. And I thought, oh, first of all, I thought there is no way he has a second pillow. Do you know well, how long it cost took, my, it never long cost it would, my mind. How long it would take to do this? Well, that was going through my mind because the bag was kind of big. No, I, thought, I just, but I thought there's I no way. Why there has bring, to be something else. I thought, why is he bringing me something? So Maybe it's go, a bag full of golden rod or something like that. He pulls <laughs> this pillow out, and my mind is just kind of going, what? And I because think the water works started. The pillow is going. Oh yeah, because I had water. I almost had waterworks when I thought I wa I'm on the pillow. Um, but that's why I offered so to hold the pillow while you were I talking, because like, I thought you were going to cry on the stain pillow. It with my, <laughs> yeah, but I was in shock because I didn't. I couldn't comprehend. But what? It, this was the original prototype. So it's the original pillow pillow prototype that he then, you know, he, he fine tuned it. The the one that was drawn was just a little larger. But I could not believe that he would part with this because this would take literally. A long time. Hours. Well, we'll hours, find out because I bought the weeks and days of, of work to do this pillow, and yeah. he was so moved by by the thought of giving it to um, because of the connection, I suppose, and he felt like Jamie, that's his pillow. Yeah. And so uh, I'm not going to get teary yet, but I am starting to. <laughs> well, don't so, cry on the pillow. Thank you. Cry over there. So much, and this pillow is very special to me and i will keep it always thank you kirk dunn and thank you claire dunn and well we're not finished with claire we're not so just so i just want to say at last count i just started reading it because i just finished my exam i have time to read now another, and so i just I just cracked it open last night and and I, i'm a huge reader love reading books and really excited about this one um so i'll i'll let everyone know how it goes i just started on the first chapter but it's it's i'm really excited about it yeah. So yeah, we'll get back on that. Yes. At last count. Uh, yes. Thank you. And thank you, Claire. And thank you, Kirk. So now there was a lot in your dye pot that you got busy and you were so excited to use that new space. So Did you say words? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, there was a lot in my Maybe. dye pot. I had all kinds of dye pots going. Um, while I was studying. And so maybe that's why it took me a month to study. Oh, God. But, uh, yeah, I want to show one of them that I was really, yeah, really happy remember with. he was studying in the workshop and you had pots yes. on the go. Yes. Um, I should have probably had coffee because I'm finding my uh, linguistic skills are <laughs> lacking this morning. Well, it's more creative. You have more creative flow in your linguistic skills. Sounding like I'm 12 back in Sudbury. <laughs> So here we go. I'm, I'll, I'll take a photo of this as well. It's Ooh, come la, up. La. I love this. I just wanted to talk about this one in what particular. It'll pick up the colors. This is my favorite child this week. Will that pick up those colors? Well, we'll put a photo there as well. Yeah, we will. So this is Peruvian Highland and Merino. And it's indigo and marigold and lac. And I just think I love it. I love I love the colors of this. It, looks, what gives it, it almost the, looks. What gives it the black dots in there? Well, you tell me. It's a mix of Peruvian Highland and Merino. The Peruvian Highland, Highland being the dark. Yes. And you've not done, we've, you've dyed with, with this before, but mostly solids. You've never done a multicolored in this. Yeah, but what I find world. interesting about this is just the, the, the way that it's sucked up the color. It's beautiful. It's, it's really, really nice. So yeah. I'm quite excited about that. I love the blend. And we could do, and that's only three colors. We've done as many as, you know, 12 colors. Yeah, the overlaps. So that's something something to come. Yes, this was you know this was a first, but we could. There's so much more we could do with this yarn. So Jamie, what is not in my dye pot? What is not in your dye pot? Well, you mentioned when <laughs> Wensley Dale. Wensley Dale. Yes, Wensley Dale. Which I'm really excited to start dyeing with, but we haven't started dyeing with it yet. No, we haven't. But but we're just going to assume. I'm going to assume. I know that it's going to take to colors. You know why? Yeah, I know it's going to be. Uh, well, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about Wednesday Dale. I know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> That's a Peggy Lee song. Um, and I, this is my guess that it's going to pick up the color really well because I could tell you a little history about it. So let's start with. Do you have any to show? I do. Let's start with the fiber itself. I'm going to need glasses because I have a sample. Let's start with. The Wensley deal. Here, you tell me, what does it feel like? It feels silky soft. And there's a reason for that. So, this 
um, breed was developed uh, in the early 1800s. Now, it's a cross breed between a English Leicester and Teeswater. Oh. And, and what's very special about this is it's got, it's one of the um, more soft, finest of the long wools. And that reason being is because two things. There is no Kemp in this wool. Oh. The Kemp is actually um, the coarse fiber that's found in almost all wools. They have a coarse fiber. It's called Kemp. This has a gene that it's Kemp-free gene. Oh, wow. So it's a little bit... It's one of the, it is one of the finest and softest of the long wools. Um, and so that comes from, I mentioned, the Teeswater. So the Teeswater was a breed of sheep that was developed uh, a couple of hundred years ago, and it was very popular. It's a large breed of sheep, as is the Wensleydale. It's one of the heaviest and largest of the breeds um, within the UK. So this was bred pr primarily for two reasons. As the Wensleydale, it's one of the true dual um, sheep because it produces very good meat and an excellent wool and the Teesdale being a large sheep produced a lot of meat sure. so this is what it is bred for but because it had the Kemp free gene and this gene is original to the Tees water and the rams when they breed the rams that ram will pass on that Kemp free gene characteristic to other breeds that right. are bred so it is one of the finest wools for that reason now, the other breed of sheep is fascinating as well. So the English Leicester. So the English Leicester is a derivative of the Leicester Longwell. Mm -hmm. They're all Leicester Longwells. Yep. English Leicester goes by the name of, um, there's two other, there's, it goes by New Leicester and Dishley Leicester. They're all the English Leicester derivatives of the Leicester Longwell. And we've covered that in other episodes. Yes. Yeah. And the Leicester Longwell goes back to the early 1700s. And it was very, very popular at the time. So popular that within a very short period of it being developed, it spread throughout the UK, then to Europe, North America, including Canada. And even George Washington mentions it because it populated the original 13 colonies. And he mentions it in 1793, as early as that, as it being one of the top choices of breeds, the English Leicester to breed. Yeah. in North America. And I'm going to mention what's even a little fascinating about that is this sheep is used to breed all of the sheep that are called um, hillside breeds or hill breeds of sheep. There's like the Cheviot, there's the Swaledale, there's, um, oh, there's, there's a numerous hill sheep. And they're bred with the Wensleydale and Anything bred with this ram is called the Massum. Which, oh, that's interesting. Which we yeah. talked about yeah. the Massum. Now, and we talked about Cheviot as well. We that talked was one about of the first Cheviot. sheep in Canada. So the Massum, they will have the Wensleydale. Now, also, this breed of sheep has the blue gene, which has the blue face, the blue head, blue ears, and blue legs. So it was also used... In, uh, con uh, contributed to the BFL, which we mm. use blue faced Lester yeah, all over the time. Which has become very popular. Exactly. Now, the sad, the sad part of the story it is it is a, a, an at risk breed, as is the Les the English Lester or the Lester Longwell, specifically purebreds. They're only registered about 200 are registered annually. They're at critically endangered. We have a farm um, just down the road that has Lester Longwells. Oh, is we that did right? a collaboration with her. Oh, see, yeah. I didn't know that at the time because we didn't we didn't do the history on it. But it's so rare that yeah, two hundred annually and globally maybe two thousand are registered annually. Whereas this one, the Wensleydale, at is is at risk, and they in the UK have only about fifteen hundred breeding female oh, wow. hues. So um, hues. So it's it's quite rare, but. Its popularity is still there. It's one of the softest. It's got a good micron count. And like we say, it produces, without that, we wouldn't have the Massum and the BFL. Oh, that's great. Dying. And I have these samples here because here we have the Teasdale. So mm -hmm. you could feel the difference. And here we have the Massum. Now, if you feel the difference between the Massum. And you know what? This blue-faced Lester to me 
still feels like. I think the Blueface Luster feels more like the T's. Doesn't it though? T's water. And this one, this one is soft, but this and this very similar but there's something you could feel a different a little bit of a different fiber within these two and this one is as soft the wensleysdale is as soft as the bfl so it's it's funny because my immediate thought was okay what am i going to do hats or sweaters and so exactly. i would say mashem is i would be a great sweater and it's mm. and it, i don't find it itchy or anything but it just no. it feels like I would want to have that as there's a sweater. A little, there's a little more sturdiness to it, if that's how you could describe it. There's more of a sturdiness. Like, li this one is airy-fairy <laughs> and light. <laughs> this one's a little more... I don't more, even know how to comment on that. This one's a little more strong, <laughs> bold, and sturdy. I love the tease water, too. The tease water is great. And I'm going to bring up... So oh, here, you're bringing up more. Well, it's the, Jeez, the actual... This bowl. is the gift that just keeps on giving. So this is the well... Now, feel how soft that is. Oh, that's nice. And so that's we nice. know that one of your favorite wools to die with is the BFL because it takes to color. It really takes to color. And here's an example. So oh, this yeah. is an example of BFL with all of those colors. We'll put a picture up because this has like a dozen colors in it. So I'm thinking because it has those this components, it may pick up. That. Oh, yes. I think you're right. I can't wait to, to, to die with this and see what it looks like because you're right i think that they the blue face lester uh, picks up color beautifully this will pick up yeah color and they use as that well. and because it was remember it was used to produce a bfl like yeah interbred to develop the bfl and also oh, here's this is, I'm excited the massum here's one of the massums yes. which is super soft excited about this one too this one we colored in goldenrod and dandelion and if you could pick up that beautiful yellow with the undertones and that is what you get from Wednesday deals. So, Fantastic. Very excited. Yeah. This is a super soft wool, and um, I think it's going to have good uh, properties to just pff, that color. Fantastic. And and you mentioned goldenrod. Early goldenrod is up already. So I am so yes. excited when we drive along and I see in the ditch the goldenrod. I get so excited. Well, how come we didn't really notice before? Because we always think of goldenrod. We always mention late it in the fall. A, late, but this the is late season, like September. Yeah. And I up. said, and I said, oh. I said the goldenrod is is up early this year, but we've had an intense humidity oh and rain, gosh, and and the forest has exploded as along with the weeds and the plants and the flowers. Um, but I thought, oh, the golden the golden the rod. golden girls the, the golden, golden girl rod the golden girls <laughs> rod. <laughs> oh my gosh! So I said it's up early, and then yeah. you said, oh, how did you know what it is? Remember you said yes. How did you know that? I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I asked you because I, because I thought it was going to trick you because it, usually we're expecting it later in yeah, the, always tricks later you. in August, uh, September, but it was early girl, goldenrod. It's called early goldenrod. Yes. But I didn't know that. I just said, oh, the girl. The, oh, my gosh. Have another drink. <laughs> I need a coffee. Okay. I don't drink coffee. Okay, that brings morning. us to Twist. We are, you've been really, really busy. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. I did was mine the pots. Mine um, pots. But you've been you really know, busy getting ready for all, that. Well, put it this way. The fun part is actually doing the dipping and pulling it out and going, oh, la, la, wow, look what I made. And then the, the not so fun part is you've got to tie the wool. Wash it, tie it. Tie it first. So we tie it first because you've got to tie it very specifically so you can get the colors through it without too tight. And you got it so it doesn't get t tangled. You tie it precisely. It's time consuming. You could do, it could take you an hour to do maybe, you know, in an hour. I don't even know how many you can do in an hour. Let's say, you know, tie up a 10 a ten and a It all day. depends on how much you're talking. <laughs> anyway. I should see how much I get done when I don't talk. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like there's five people in the room. It's so productive. Anyway, Twist. So we'll, we'll be at Twist August 12th to 14th. We're vending. We are. And... We, you've done an amazing job getting Thank us ready you. for it. And so we'll be going up there next week. And I'll also be giving a talk on sustainability and yes, and yarn and fashion and all that stuff on the 13th of August. Saturday at, afternoon. At 1.30. And it will be a live feed also on Facebook. Oh, yes. so people can follow along. People can follow along. Take yes. note of that because it should be interested, interesting and fascinating because, you know, a lot of it, you know, why Kevin Boynett's invited, of course, is because, you know, 
you know, wh what our values are and our mission, it's, it's not necessarily mission statement, but part of our mission yeah. is to, we love to educate. Yeah. Which I hope I just did. We just did. So educate. Um, we'd like to be environmentally aware. Do what our part to do things. You know. Yeah. In an environmentally friendly way. Yes. Um, and then we talk. And the reason, you know, I had a chat with a, with with some of the organizers there because I had a chat about this because part of you think sustainability. Um, well, we just mentioned we we work with these wolves that are so rare, and it's all about you know how they're bred, how they're raised to keep the breed uh, pure, clean, and continuous so that the breed survives um, until we have these wonderful heritage wolves. Because if you think these, these like the Wensleydale, it, it was one of the most popular wolves ever. So here we have, in the, by the 1920s, it was almost extinct. And then they brought it back. And now it's still there. And we produce these wolves. And we try to bring that to the forefront. So you'll have a lot to talk about yes. at the live chat. And I will say that when you were giving the story of Wensleydale, and then I picked up the Wensleydale, I definitely got goosebumps all on my arm because this is such a great history and a great story to it. So just, yes. it means dying, it is even, it's so special. It's that much it's more special. special. Yeah, so. it really is. And I, I said to you, I said, oh, I'm not gonna tell you what I found out about because when I do my research, you know, I'm, sh I'm so surprised. And we always talk about it. It, it. it sounds complicated because these sheep, you think they're so inter bread but no there it's it's a science it's yeah. an exact science to replicate and to to create these breeds that are going to survive because all of it all of the wool and the sheep survival as we know is dependent on their environment their feeding grounds where they are and that's why they're interbred because when you brought them to canada and you got 20 feet of snow like up north um you know a kid snow up to your waist um you know you need that sheep to be able to survive in all conditions and so when you move them and you and you want to purify the meat and the wool and have better wool number one it has to do with the environment where they're going to be able to survive and live and breed yes so that's the twist festival and in a nutshell, <laughs> August 12th to 14th. And we're so, and, but most important, so we're excited to see people. Really, really exactly. excited to see people. Oh my OMG. <laughs> we're going to see some of you out there, I'm sure. We're going to see a lot of people. Mes amis Québécois aussi. Il va y avoir beaucoup de gens de la belle province. And I'm so excited to be able to practice my French and speak French and welcome. Everybody who's going to come by, I'm going to be very, we're both going to be very, oh my God, very so excited. excited. And then we are coming back and we're going to the Poconos and we'll we'll shoot some of that as much as we can. After that, we're going to have a little bit of a break before then we have to just get very, very focused focused on our on next. PEI, uh, the PEI one as well. That, and that's in September. And so that Fiber Festival, we've been anticipated since, anticipating since 2019, yes. which it was going to be the first one, but it's actually now, yeah. finally, will be the first festival, the PEI yeah. Fiber Festival, and we're going to be that much more excited. But more to come on that. Yes. Can you say road trip? Yes. Fantastic. And we might even see Anna Green Gables as well. So thank you everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. And we really enjoy sharing our stories with you. And I'm going to just, I'm just going to say it's actually not next week. It's this week. It's in a few days. We're leaving. It is. It's in a few days. <laughs> so thanks everyone. À la prochaine, mes amis. Bye-bye. We are less than a week away from the Twist Festival, which starts on August 12th to 14th in saint andre avelin Le Festival Twist commence bientôt à saint andre avelin au mois d'août du 12 au 14, juste au nord de Montréal. And we're going to be vending, and we've got a lot of great colorways to share with you. Venez nous voir alors à notre kiosque dans l'arène centrale et venez voir nos belles nouvelles couleurs de laine. I'll also be speaking on a panel, and we're talking about sustainability and fashion. And that happens on August 13th at 1.30, and it's also going to be live-streamed on Facebook. Aussi, Christopher se trouve à la table ronde pour une discussion au sujet de la durabilité et la mode le samedi à 13h30. We really look forward to seeing you in person. Nous sommes très heureux de vous revoir encore une fois en personne au Festival Twist.